dear esteemed Professor Mazen Maka, Professor Ali Barak, and uh, uh, dear esteemed friend uh, uh, Professor Ahmad Murad. And we are usually happy to have these sessions of MDT activity, and I'm very happy to talk about, uh, after Dr. Uh, my friend Dr. Ahmad Hosni and uh, Dr. Nada. And we will talk about the systemic treatment at HCC. And you all know that uh, HCC instance and the mortality is different according to the countries. We have about 15 per 100,000 population in countries like U.S. and France and about 25 per 100,000 population in countries like China. But unfortunately, we have here the endemic and the highest instance of HCC in the world is about 40, 43 uh, cases per 100,000 population in Egypt. And as previously discussed by Dr. Hosni, that usually the patient coming in late stages in DC, uh, BCLC staging. And in spite, we have a, like a cascade of events to reach the HCC. We didn't until now usually this, uh, detecting the patient in early stage. So if we have about 85% with hepatitis C and B positivity, and also the NASH, NASH before, before the cirrhosis and HCC. And here in the treatment modality that we will go for, either curative approaches including the transplant, including the radiofrequency ablation, and sometimes resection, and go for the uh, other uh, palliative approach, including the taste and maybe tear, and also the systemic treatment. So what is the role of systemic treatment in HCC? And it's very important to define the types and also the timing of treatment now with the systemic treatment. So there is any what's called adjuvant treatment. So can we go for giving a systemic treatment after the curative approaches, including the liver transplant, resection, or radiofrequency ablation? Can we go for the new adjuvant treatment before these curative approaches? or we can, what is the best treatment in the first line in the metastatic and the advanced HCC, and what is the best treatment in the second line, and shall we go for combination, the very new concept as discussed by Dr. Hosni, going combining the local modality and systemic treatment. And unfortunately, in the adjuvant treatment, most of the trials fail using the sorafenib in the adjuvant settings, but now there is ongoing studies with the new immunotherapy in the adjuvant and in the new adjuvant setting in MD Anderson. And here is the famous STORM trial that's releasing a negative study in the adjuvant setting after surgical resection and local ablation. Then going to the combination strategy. So we have now new systemic treatment, including the immunotherapy, and one of the most important rationale in combining immuno and local treatment that rendering a cold, a cold the tumor to inflamed or hot tumor, so may responding better with the immunotherapy treatment. And then to combine the sorafenib, there is, uh, we can't go for rationale for combining systemic treatment together or not, or combining sorafenib with local treatment modalities. And you see here that a lot of local immunotherapy for liver cancer, combining immunotherapy and local treatment, a lot of a huge number of studies are ongoing now worldwide. And another rationale, what is called hit it theory, to go for local immunotherapy injection in the tumor. And as you see here, that the, 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 there is improvement in the, in the main tumor, and also in the other tumor, there is a systemic effect of the local injection of the immunotherapy inside the liver. It's still ongoing study, but it's very, very important to track these studies. And then going for combining sorafenib with the local, with the taste or the local treatment. And the first ever, there is, we have a lot of failures before, as you see here, but we have the first uh, uh, positive study, the tactic study by Professor Kodo, uh, with giving the sorafenib with the uh, taste, 
And the study met its end by the progression-free survival, and you see here doubling of the progression-free survival, 25 months versus only 13.5 months, and there is no overall survival data in this case. But the tactic study needs a special tactic to prove its positivity, so the definition of the primary endpoint of the progression-free survival is different, not the usual definition. It is defined at the time to untestable progression. So it is a special definition of the progression-free survival. But again, there is another study showing a positivity for giving, combining the local treatment with the taste, with the serafinib versus serafinib and all, and there is improvement in the progression-free survival and time to progression, but there is no improvement in the overall survival. A meta-analysis in the same issue is showing that there is improvement with the combined approach versus no single approach. Going to the metastatic setting, from 2008, we have the Sorafenib with the SHARP trial and the Asia Pacific trial. And I want to tell you that in this, in this uh, it is very shameful that we have uh, a publication in the Lancet and the New England Journal with about almost 250 patients. And we have here in Egypt, uh, with the, endemic, the endemic country with HCC, no publication, no large publication about the HCC. So I, it is important to join forces to go for important to publish uh, uh, our results in the HCC. You see here the Asia Pacific and the SHARP trial showing, as Dr. Hosni said, improvement in survival with hazard ratio of 0.6, but only the gain in three months in either study. And you see here how with the response rate with the sorafenib, only 3%, only 3% with the uh, the sorafenib treatment. So a lot of negative trials, so from 2008 till 2017, all the studies are negative. You see here, till the REFLECT study with Professor Kudo comparing the new TKI, the sorafenib versus lenvatinib. It is the front line in the first first line treatment with lenvatinib versus sorafenib head to head, comparing these two drugs, and the first time to have a positive result. About like doubling of the progression free survival, and you see here how beautiful is the overall response rate, 18.8% versus only 6.5% with the sorafenib, but unfortunately there is no uh, overall survival improvement. Tell the revolution of the immunotherapy. So we all know that the immunotherapy revolution after the declaration of the ex-president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, with metastatic melanoma after treatment with the immunotherapy and the complete disappearance of the lesions, and then the Nobel Prizes by Professor Allison from MD Anderson and Professor Honjo. So it is specific things in the immunotherapy. And you see here the plateauing of response, the, 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 the improvement and durability of response with the immunotherapy. And this is one of the cases treated with the immunotherapy in lung cancer, treated in, 2000, in April 2013, with the, with the responding patient in the 2000, July 2013, and this duration of response, five years duration or durable responses and the specific characterization of the immunotherapy. And the, the immunity and response to immune check in, uh, point inhibitor, you see that the cancer cell using usually to mutation, a lot of mutations, so development of new antigen and the immune target leading to activation of the immune system with the release of the infiltrating lymphocyte, made it, made it, uh, making the, the tumor site more inflamed, and this leading better outcome of the checkpoint inhibitor of the immunotherapy. So the more inflamed, more tumor mutation burden, more probability of response with the, with the uh, immunotherapy. 
and the most of the, of the cancer subtype that have human mutation burden is lung cancer melanoma, and also liver cancer have moderate to high tumor mutation burden. Another important issue, as discussed by Dr. Hosni, is the angiogenesis. So we know all that HCC is hypervascular malignancy, and this hypervascularity is mediated partly by vascular endothelial growth factors and other proangiogenic factors. So the, the very plexit-changing trial that published in 2019, combining the immunotherapy and anti-angiogenic agents, atilizumab with bevacizumab, compared to our treatment that we received from 2008, the sorafenib. And it's important to see here in the patient characteristic that the etiology of the HCC in those population is hepatitis B virus and hepatitis C virus in about, hepatitis C B in about 50% of the population, C virus in about 20%, and one virus about 30%. There is a lot of extra hepatic uh, uh, metastasis and microvascular invasion in 77% in both treatment group. I want you to see how beautifully the results. There is improvement in the overall survival, not reached till now in the atezo arm compared to only 13.9 months in the sorafenib arm. And also, again, doubling of the progression-free survival with the atezo arm. And you see here how, 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 how beautiful is the response rate. 27% response rate compared to only 12% in the sorafenib arm. And the median, as I told you, the, the uh, duration of response is not reached in the atezo and the Biva arm compared to the uh, sorafenib arm. The side effects, which is very, very important, is less than the sorafenib, maybe some infusion-related side effects related to the immunotherapy. And the most important, the quality of life. The, there is improvement in the quality of life with the immuno bivar compared to the sorafenib. And again, it is not important to have hepatitis C, hepatitis B before, so it is, it is effective in all patients subgroup, as you see. So this is the first study showing an improvement in overall survival and the quality of life with the, any first-line treatment compared to sorafenib and maybe the Brexit-changing treatment option in HCC in the first line. But it is very, very important to know that not all the immunotherapy is alike to each other. Not all the checkpoints are the same. So we have a failure trial here. The, uh, the checkmate 459 comparing the NIVO versus sorafenib and there is no improvement in the overall survival, maybe in the BDL1 positivity higher, but not on all population. Going to the second line, and this is a summary of the second line treatment that we have in the patient with HCC with the resource trial combining regorafenib versus placebo. And here is a very important point that we cannot use the regorafenib in patients who have uh, like side effects from the sorafenib. They are used only in patients who have progressed on the sorafenib but tolerated the sorafenib. There is improvement in overall survival and progression-free survival. And going to important trial by Professor Abu Alpha, the cabozetinib versus placebo. And the, here it's very important to know that using the cabozetinib can be used in the second line and third line. And this is the only drug can be used this. And this is important to like draw the, the, the map of the patient. What is the best to go for the first line? Shall we go for combination first, the timing of the treatment? What is the best second line and what is the best third line? This is again the improvement in the overall survival and the progression-free survival. And again here, the immuno in the second line. A very good achievement of the nivolumab in the second line. So using the nivolumab either in surabinib naive or serafinib experiences, and, and you see here, again, better response rate compared to the other uh, uh, TKIs, uh, the serafinib, and you hear a very good overall survival in the second line 
either in the patient with seraphinate experiences or the seraphinate naive patients. Again, not all the checkpoints inhibitors are the same. The bimbrolizumab, one of the strongest checkpoint inhibitors, failed to meet its primary endpoint. So the bimbrolizumab, in spite that we have succeeded in the keynote 2022-4, and we have improvement in the overall response rate and the patient to have improvement in the progression-free survival in phase two trial, but failed to show this in the phase three trial. Another new anti-angiogenic agent, the ramucirumab, in patients with high alpha fetoprotein, more than 400, so it is, they have improvement in the overall survival and disease progression-free survival versus placebo. So we have now a cascade of new targets in the treatment of HCC. So as you see here, it is important for us as a community, as a multidisciplinary team, to search inside the HCC, we are the endemic country of HCC, and you must see all these targetable mutations that can we assess beside the immunotherapy and the checkpoint inhibitor. And uh, this is the take home message that we must play as a team, and it's very important to know which is the treatment to go first, and can we combine with, chemo, with, with, with other local treatment or not, the use of immunotherapy in the local treatment and the systemic treatment, the first line, the new TKI, the lembatinib, in the first line treatment of uh, HCC. Thank you very much, and inviting you all to the ISO. A uh, very important question, uh, Dr. Hani. As usual, um, we demand it is different, you know, you know, that we use the immunotherapy in different tumor types now. Um, in HCC, there is no difference to use the GOF or BDL1 assessment. So we can, yes, it may predict higher responses, more overall survival benefit, but the work. The, the ATIZO in either BDL1 positive or BDL1 negative patients. So we can, there is no matter to have BDL1 assessment before assessment of the of the tumor. Yeah, not any patient, but you have a must go for the, the child A patients. Yes. As we just mentioned, that it is very, very important now after long experience with serafinib. I think all the, all the floor here had a very, a very good experience with serafinib for about 10 years, 12 years now. Uh, and uh, all of, most of us showing that uh, it is not it is good treatment, but not the best. We, and looking deeply to the cell. And knowing that there is another factor that may affect the cell survival and maybe overall response rate. So now we have two types of treatment that have a very good response rate. The lenvatinib and also the immunotherapy with the uh, anti-angiogenic agent, both combinations. So it is important to choose. But the first ever who have an improvement in overall survival is compared to the serafinib, compared to the serafinib, and the overall survival, not the median, not reached till now, is the immunotherapy with Dina. So it is important to go with the survival now. It is not yet published uh, completely the results, uh, uh, the abstracts only, but it is a practice changing uh, treatment. 